Hello friends, in this video, we will discuss about plugging in induction motor. So, plugging is one method of electrical braking of induction motor and in general, there are three methods of electrical braking of induction motor. So, one method is, uh, the plugging is one method of electrical braking of induction motor and the other method is the regenerative braking, regenerative braking and the third one is the dynamic braking. So in the dynamic braking again we are having four methods. So one is the AC dynamic braking and the other one is the DC dynamic braking and the third one is the self excited capacitor braking, self excited capacitor braking and the fourth one is the zero sequence braking. So these are the various methods available for electrical braking of induction motor. So normally speaking for stopping any motor or for stopping of an induction motor or any motor uh, what we have to do is we have to just disconnect the motor from the supply mains. So when you disconnect the motor from the supply mains uh, the torque developed will no longer remain and the combined effect of your rotor and load will bring the motor to standstill. So this is how you can stop the motor now when a more when a more rapid and positive action is required so more rapid braking more rapid and positive action a more positive action is required then you can go for the electrical braking or the mechanical braking now these electrical braking over the mechanical braking has several advantages and uh, we particularly you need to uh, you need to know the precise control of stopping so where you particularly know need to know the precise control of stopping and where the smoothness of operation is required so this gives these two advantages give you gives the electrical braking an edge over the mechanical braking now an electrical motor is said to be in the braking mode when the developed torque or when the direction of the developed torque is opposite to that of the rotation of the motor. So then you can say the electrical motor is in braking mode. So normally the motors, normally the, the motors can be in two modes. So one is the motoring mode and the other one is the braking mode. So in induction motor you can also say the regenerative mode when the when the slip goes uh, when your slip goes negative then you can say or when your speed goes beyond the synchronous speed then you can say in the regenerative mode but normally speaking one is the braking uh, one is the motoring and the braking because your regenerative mode is also a uh, kind of braking so here we have seen the regenerative braking and in the induction motor torque slip characteristics we will see that uh, beyond synchronous speed or when the slip is negative you will see the regenerative mode of braking. So the motor is motoring and uh, when when we say the motor is mot motoring that means it is taking electrical energy. So there is a conversion of electrical energy to mechanical energy and it supports its motion. It supports its motion and uh, a motor is said to be in braking when there is a conversion of mechanical energy to electrical energy and here it opposes its motion it opposes its motion so these are the two things you have to keep in mind so when is the motoring and when is the braking and what is, what will happen in the braking and what will happen in the motoring now we have this uh, we have i have told you the three methods of braking so in this video I will discuss only about this plugging, plugging method of electrical braking of induction motor. So the plugging can be achieved in an induction motor by just merely reversing any two of the three phases of the stator terminals. So if, if I say there are three terminals, there are three terminals and these three terminals are connected to the supply means and these are to your stator windings. 
so let me say this is r this is y and this is b so merely by reversing any two any two of the three phases r y b so if you reverse any two of the or interchange the connection of any two phases of the three phases available then you can achieve your plugging and this reversal of any two phases of the three phases it will cause the direction of your rotating magnetic field reversed so the direction of rotating magnetic field gets reversed by interchanging the connection of any two phases of the three state of phases available so how the direction of rotating magnetic field changes by changing any two phases of the three phases so normally speaking if i say so let me say this is r phase and this is y phase and this is z phase so your r phase follows your y phase and your y phase follows your this r y b uh, your y phase follows the b phase and again b phase follows your r phase now i am interchanging any two of the three phases so what i do here is let me make r is, r is i am not changing anything with r now i am changing the b and y phases so i will put my b here and uh, this will be my y now again as we said the convention r follows y y follows b and b follows r so similarly here you can see your r should follow y and y should follow b and b should follow r so here the direction is clockwise and here the direction is anti clockwise that means by changing any two of the phases of the three state of phases you can change or you can reverse the direction of rotating magnetic field so when the motor is switched to a plugging operation then you can see the speed of induction motor or the uh, speed of induction motor you can say it will be in reverse to the direction of rotating magnetic field that means you were if this is a speed of rotating magnetic field uh, and nr is the speed of induction motor so this both will be opposite when the plugging operation is when the plugging operation is continued so that means when this ns will be opposite to nr then if i talk about the slip your slip will be equal to here we have reversed the direction of rotating magnetic field so i am writing minus ns minus nr upon minus ns so minus ns minus ns is for we have reverse the direction of rotating magnetic field and this if i say sp sp uh, slip in the plugging mode so it will be equal to 2 minus s where s is ns minus nr upon ns that means here you can see the slip at plugging operation will be nearly equal to 2 so the slip will be equal to 2 that means the voltage induced in the rotor circuit will be double the voltage at standstill suppose uh, if we say s into e2 is the voltage induced in the rotor circuit so if i draw the rotor circuit uh, so this will be a rotor circuit and again we are having stator and uh, there will be a draw here let me run this there will be impedance here and there will be a supply so here the voltage induced will be s into e2 this is x2 this is uh, this is s into x2 this is r2 uh, this will be r2 so at standstill at standstill this induced voltage will be equal to simply e2 because at standstill s is equal to 1 now in the plugging, plugging operation when the slip will be equal to 2 or approximately equal to 2 the voltage induced will get doubled so now the voltage will be more and uh, when the voltage or the induced emf is more then the current in the windings will also more so that means you have to uh, you have to incorporate additional insulation for the windings so this will cause you to incorporate 
additional insulation to the windings and uh, here the motor acts as a brake so the motor acts as a brake and it absorbs the kinetic energy from the still revolving load and that kinetic energy if i say t mechanical so let me write uh, i'll write here so p mechanical is the power associated with the revolving load so the load is continuously revolving and then i have switched on my motor to the plugging operation so when the motor switch to plugging operation the motor acts as a brake and this motor absorbs the kinetic energy from the revolving load and uh, that kinetic energy if i associate the, with the mechanical power so that kinetic kin uh, that kinetic energy associated power is p mechanical so this p mechanical is dissipated in the form of heat and at the same instant the rotor also draws power from the stator and that heat will also be dissipated in the form of heat now as the slip is 2 here so your rotor frequency f2 will be equal to 2 times of stator frequency now as the frequency has increased this will cause you additional iron losses in, in the motor so this will also get dissipated in the form of heat so basically we are having three uh, power dissipations one is from the still revolving load and one is from the rotor drawing power from the load and other one is from the iron losses so these three losses or the, these three uh, power dissipation will be equal to three times of the motor at blocked rotor position so this will be three times of the energy stored in the inertia form or you can say a blocked rotor so when the motor is at blocked position then uh, there will be some power dissipation and this power dissipation is three times of the power dissipation so normally you were they will be equal to 3 by 2 j omega m s square and here uh, half of the j omega m s square will be from your kinetic energy and other j omega m s square will be from the source itself so this is how we get 3 by 2 j omega square now in the squirrel case induction motor this whole heat is dissipated in the machine itself and whereas in the slip ring type of induction motor we can employ the external resistance for this uh, purpose of heat dissipation so now if i talk about the size of the motor so your size of the motor depends on the loading condition normally but where you employ the plugging operation so the size of the motor where plugging operation is employed it depends on the loading condition as well as the braking conditions as well so this is so you should be careful by choosing for choosing the size of motor whether you are employing which kind of braking so if you are employing the plugging kind of uh, braking then you have to choose the size of the motor depending on the loading conditions as well as on the braking conditions now if i talk about the torque slip characteristics in the induction motor so let me say uh, the curve will be like this so this will be the torque slip characteristics of your induction motor this is your torque 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 and uh, here you are having slip s is equal to 0 slip s is equal to 1 slip s is equal to 2 and slip s is equal to minus 1 so you can see uh, in this operation when the slip s is equal to 0 to 1 the motor is in a motoring mode and uh, when slip goes negative or your speed goes beyond synchronous speed then it is regenerative mode and uh, when your slip is in the range of 1 less than s less than 2 then it is said to be in the braking mode you can or you can say the plugging operation so here in this mode you are having the plugging operation so the plugging operation is when your slip is greater than 100 percent so you know if i see discuss the torque slip characteristics here so let me say this is my torque and this is my slip and your slip s is equal to zero here and uh, let me say your slip s is equal to 1 here and your slip s is equal to 2 here that means basically this mode has become your motoring mode and this mode has become your plugging mode so 
these are the various toxic characteristics plotted for the different resistors so rotor resistors if i say this is my rotor resistance r1 this is for rotor resistance r2 and this is for rotor resistance r3 so we know that the slip corresponding to maximum torque your slip corresponding to maximum torque can be given by s is equal to r2 upon x2 but the t maximum will be given by uh, 60 by 2 pi ns into 3 v square upon 2 x2 dash where x2 dash is a, a rotor that is a standstill so let me say the rotor reactance referred to the stator side so this is the t maximum and the t maximum is independent of the rotor resistance there is no r2 term in this equation and your t maximum is independent of the rotor resistance but the slip corresponding to maximum torque is dependent on the rotor resistance that means as you increase the rotor resistance the slip corresponding to maximum torque increases so here you can see the resistance R3 is greater than R2 is greater than R1. So the higher the resistance you employ, you are having the higher breaking torque. So this is the, uh, let me say this is a point B and this is a point A. So the ordinates, there is a Y coordinates on this point or the ordinates on this point B. So this is a breaking torque this is a breaking torque and this is a breaking torque so this is a breaking torque for the resistor r1 which is having a smaller value r1 is smaller and this is a breaking torque for r2 and this is a breaking torque for r3 and where the maximum torque will be equal for the three cows so here you are having the maximum torque but the breaking torque is more for the resistance which is having a higher value that means higher the resistance you can employ you are having a higher breaking torque and this is the reason why in squirrel cage motors that is the squirrel cage induction motors which are primarily designed for the maximum efficiency and with lower resistance this method is not much suitable because in the squirrel cage induction motor they are mainly designed for the maximum efficiency and uh, their rotors are having low resistance and for the low resistance the breaking torque is smaller and that is why for squirrel cage induction motor this plugging is not much suitable and uh, you can employ in the squirrel cage induction motor by inserting the external resistance through slip ring and brushes so that you can have a higher breaking torque and uh, a minimum breaking time can be uh, that is a minimum breaking time can be obtained by employing a higher resistance so now if we see the expression for the breaking torque so when you obtain the expression for the bre breaking torque this you have to replace s by 2 minus s because here we have seen the slip for the breaking becomes 2 minus s where s is ns minus nr upon ns so the expression or the equation for the breaking torque can be given by 60 upon 2 pi ns where ns is the revolution per minute this is 3 into s into e2 square into r2 upon r2 square plus sx2 whole square so this is the expression for the breaking torque and if you see the expression for the rotor current your it will i2 will be given by s into e2 upon under root of r2 square plus s into x2 square so this is the expression for the uh, rotor current and this is the expression for the breaking torque and we have seen that the slip becomes or the slip approaches to 2 or it is approximately equal to 2 when you resort to the plugging operation so now as the slip becomes 2 and uh, you are induced emf which is s into e2 which is nothing but twice of the induced emf at standstill so as the induced emf become more the rotor current will also be more so the rotor current will be more and uh, it may damage your windings so that in that case if you see the type of motor if we employ the squirrel case induction motor then the windings may get damaged but if you employ the uh, slip ring type of induction motor you can uh, insert external resistance to prevent this high flow of current so in that point of view also your slip ring type of motor finds more suitable for this plugging operation and if you see the plot for the current so normally your current 
will be like this so in this from the motoring action this will be the rotor current in the motoring action and this will be the braking action so this current can be minimized by employing uh, external resistance into the rotor circuit so if we talk about the uh, torque slip characteristics or the braking that is a plugging method of braking an induction motor by analyze, analyzing through the quadrants so this is your first quadrant uh, this is your second quadrant this is third quadrant and the fourth quadrant so let me give you a brief review so this is the torque slip characteristics let me say this is r1 for the resistor r1 and this is the resistor for r1 and this is for r2 and uh, this is for r2 resistor r2 where r2 is greater than r1 so this the for the resistor r1 the torque slip characteristics represent so let me say uh, clearly r1 and r2 characteristics are for the normal direction of rotation of motor so these characteristics are for the normal direction of rotation of motor so this is your torque and this is your speed let me say ns so ns is your speed and uh, here we are having the negative torque and here we are having a negative sp speed these two characteristics are for the normal direction of rotation and these two characteristics are for the reverse direction of rotation of motor so uh, where this is this line represents your torque load tl and this is for minus tl that is a torque load now at the instant when the motor is switched on and if i say this is my operating point let me say a is my operating point where your torque load meets this torque slip characteristics now at this point a we are having a load we are having a load and uh, the torque load is tl and let me say this point is n so the speed is n now the load is we are having a load and we are having a torque load and the n now when you resort to the braking operation when the braking option, operation is continued or when you switch on to the braking operation this torque slip characteristics will fall to this position either this position or this position so if you are employing a smaller resistance it will fall to this position and if you insert during the plugging operation external resistance then let me say this is the point of operation when you resort to the plugging that means maintaining the same direction so the direction of rotation will be the same so n is positive here but the develop the developed torque will be reversed so n is positive the direction is same the direction of rotation is same but the developed torque becomes negative it is same the speed of that is a speed of rotation or the motor direction of rotation is same but the torque develop becomes negative now if you employ external resistance it will fall here if you do not employ the external resistance it will fall here because this this resistance will remain same now this will reach the point let me say f is the point here or from here this will reach this point now when these characteristics will reach this point so f is this point now here you can see the speed has become zero the speed has become zero but the torque is not zero it is having some negative value so negative torque exists here or reverse torque exists here and uh, now at this juncture you have to disconnect the motor from the supply mains so you have to disconnect the motor from the supply mains at point f when the speed is equal to zero otherwise if you fail to disconnect the motor from the supply uh, they will go they will fall in the reverse uh, motoring so here this is your plugging operation and this is motoring operation and this is reverse motoring operation so they will fall in the reverse motoring operation and uh, they they will develop a negative direct that is a negative speed or you can say the reverse direction of rotation and uh, if you employ the same resistor r1 then this will become the operating point let me say e is the operating point 
So this will be the operating point if you fail to disconnect the motor from the supply for the external resistance removed. Now if you remove the external resistance this will be the operating point and if you employ the same resistance R2 then this will be the operating point. And in case if you employ a very high resistance then you can see your plugging operation in this fourth quadrant. So for a very high resistance the plugging operation can be seen in the fourth quadrant because here you, you can see the slip S is equal to 1 and slip S is equal to 2. So that means here we are having 100% slip, you are having 100% slip that means your speed is equal to 0 and the speed is negative here, you are having negative speed. So in this region we can see the plugging for a very high resistance that means if I employ a very high resistance so here we are having the negative speed so for in the reverse direction of rotation uh, the for a high resistance the plugging operation can be so this will be the motoring operation and this will be the plugging operation so the plugging operation for a very high resistance can be seen in the fourth quadrant where for some normal resistance you can see the plugging operation in the second quadrant so this is all about the plugging method of braking in induction motors i hope you understood well please subscribe to our channel thank you